All right, here we go. The long-awaited top five dividend stocks of 2017 video um, is coming out now in May. So we are five months uh, behind, but I recall the last video also being filmed in May or April. So don't worry so much. That one was a success. People made money on that. Uh, I got lots of requests to make one for 2017, so we are doing that now. Uh, if you're not familiar with me, my trading style is much more technical than most people's. I don't use intuition. Um, fundamentals are important to me, but so are technicals, technicals that have statistical backing, um, the results of academic findings, back tests. I integrate all of these and if you are a person who respects this type of research prior to a trade please join me in looking at these dividend stocks um, you gotta realize though that we cannot trade on every possible indicator so what I'm gonna do is even though I've put a good deal of research into all of the trades I'm gonna be recommending today um, we're gonna be looking at just a handful of indicators or a handful of reasons for each of these dividend trades. Um, my goal here, like my long-term goal, in case you don't know who I am, is to help people get out of whatever shitty financial position they're in. Um, I get emails all the time from people who have used my methods, made money or made money back um, after losing money with other methods they found in books or online. So that always makes me pretty happy. Um, eventually, automation is going to take over most jobs. And if you haven't found a skill to allow yourself to kind of get out of that system and, and make money your own way, you're going to have a lot of trouble in the future. Um, I think trading is a very good escape. And it doesn't require much time. As long as you have a decent strategy, a decent system of uh, predicting which way a stock is going to move, um, and a good way of managing your money, you should be a decent trader. Um, if you're interested in in trading, because this video is going to be more of a dividend, uh, long-term investment strategy, um, but if you're interested in uh, trading earnings, which is probably the best way to start out trading, uh, go to DamonVariol.com and sign up for my newsletter. I will send out my uh, weekly top trades. Um, for earning trade, if you on the long term are correct 55% of the time, the sheer magnitude of the earnings um, of, the, of the ROI from those trades can allow you to survive just by trading. Um, you don't need other tricky methods, but uh, once you get good, you will probably want to move outward. So let's start today with, um, well, first of all, defining what a best uh, stock is. After all, this video is called the top five uh, or best five, I haven't chosen a name yet, uh, dividend stocks for 2017. So we, we want to know what does that mean? Um, does that mean just purely based on expected profit for the remainder of 2017? Um, if you ask a trader, uh, every trader is going to have a different answer. I'm going to tell you we have five dividend stocks to look at, so I'm not going to say that everyone's going to adhere to the same uh, criteria. Um, we got high yield dividends which are dividends that will pay you a decent chunk of the money you put in on um, every three months. That's important, uh, that yield is important, but you're going to have to balance that with a risk. Generally, the higher the yield, for example, a dividend that pays 10% of what you put in every three months is going to have a higher risk. There's also the question of growth. Is the company that you buy a growing company? If it's uh, in stagnation, that could work out for you if it's trending sideways and you're just collecting the dividend, but generally you want a stock that's going to be growing so that you're profiting both from the stock growth and from the dividend gains. Um, you're also probably going to want to look at the safety 
there's of course a trade-off when you go for high growth and high yields you're trading risk you're taking on more risk for those types of positions and uh, I also will be using a, a I would say kind of contrarian anti-sentiment uh, criterion for choosing these these dividend stocks I like to choose something that the market says is is not gonna grow um, if I can find a position where everybody says it's going down and I have a reason to believe it's going up those are the best types of trades because you can buy your dividend stocks at a, at a significant discount and generally good news for this type of uh, stock will allow for a really strong rally um, if you're if you have a background in psychology or if you like psychology you might have heard of cognitive dissonance which is the idea of um, reality not matching your beliefs and something's gotta give either reality has to change or your beliefs have to change now recently I've been looking at how cognitive dissonance is a characteristic of a stock um, in other words does this stock act irrationally and we're going to start out by looking at, at at one such stock and here we are this is our first dividend pick um, okay let's see I gotta switch my camera all right switching I'm gonna switch the camera here and here is our first pick C or K R O crow crow um, all right so if you're gonna be buying a dividend stock what you're essentially doing is you're paying to hold a portion of the company but you're also expecting that some of the profits that the company make makes is passed on to you so generally you want to know how that company makes money for this company Kronos um, well let's start at what I said at the very beginning we want to check cognitive dissonance so um, I run back tests on these stocks to see whether they act rationally on news events um, if they act irrationally in specific ways we can we can determine that that action is driven by cognitive dissonance in the investors for example um, let's say you have a stock that has been falling for a long time like uh, GoPro let's say this stock has been falling um, for quite some time and uh, you're holding on to it nonetheless there's going to be a significant amount of cognitive dissonance you have to deal with because you have to explain to yourself why you continue to hold a stock that's made you lose so much money now in this sort of psychology in this thought process in this mood you're going to react differently to news than most people react so for example on GoPro maybe the first sign of good news for someone who's been holding during this huge sell-off and hasn't sold in the middle somewhere um, on good news you're gonna overreact that's cognitive dissonance um, cognitive dissonance could could be good uh, for you if you're going to be holding a high-risk dividend stock but we're looking at today well at least for this pick crow is one of low cognitive dissonance this is a stock that has been going up for a long time investors originally made their decisions to buy the stock and they were well rewarded now when a news event occurs that's positive they probably won't put much stock in it they'll look at it rather objectively because you're not going to be in the cognitive dissonance state where every little piece of information is really important to you and you end up overreacting on the first sign of good, something good or bad uh, so here crow I've done the back test 
it has pretty much no cognitive dissonance. It acts as expected. Therefore, it's rather safe in terms of news. It, it acts in a logical manner. Now, what is this company exactly? Um, well, you can look into the company history yourself. I'll just give you a, a quick summary, a one sentence summary. Um, see if I can make this bigger. Kronos Worldwide produces and markets titanium dioxide pigments in Europe, North America, the Asia Pacific, and internationally. Um, you guys know what this is? Yeah, probably not unless you have a background in chemistry. Um, I don't really know what it is either. Doesn't matter. What matters is whether you can look up how the macro environment for such a thing is going to change in the coming months. And, um, well, that's, that's what we can look at. Um, just running a Google search. So here is something I found. Oh, here, right here. So um, one, one of the reasons I made this pick is the macro environment's pretty good. You've got a rather unpopular, uh, non-glamorous material that's supporting this dividend stock. And uh, it's going to be growing. The consumption and demand for this product is going to be growing over the next 10 years. So although I call this a top dividend pick for 2017, you could easily hold this for much longer and uh, gain exposure to the gains in this general macro market. Looking at the macro market can be very useful for long-term holdings. And this is what I wanted to start us out with. A pretty standard dividend stock, low cognitive dissonance, good macro market, and uh, decent yield. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to get a payment every three, yeah, here you go. You're going to get a payment every three months. And um, when you look up the annual dividend income, you're usually going to get it in the form of a yield. That's going to tell you the percentage expected, um, assuming that the stock price stays the same, if it trends sideways, this is what you can expect to get every year by holding that stock. Now, a lot of people don't think it's a lot, um, but remember this is added to the gains you get from the stock moving upward, assuming it does move upward. Um, for a safe, a safe stock that pays dividends, a safe dividend payer, you're generally going to be looking at a yield of somewhere around 4%. So I think this is a pretty decent first, uh, first choice for this year's set of uh, dividend stocks. You got a 4% yield, pretty normal, pretty decent, um, a stock that reacts normally to news, and a very good um, risk versus reward. So remember, we aren't just looking at the dividend, we're looking at how the stock is gonna pay off when we finally do sell it. Now, as you can see, Crow has been on a tear. It's been moving upward um, since the beginning of the year. And we don't have any reason to believe that it's going to reverse. If we did, we'd be a lot more cautious with this one. But the macro environment's good. I mean, the back tests have looked good, have been looking good, and the uh, the other algorithms I run on it have said that it's a pretty good risk reward uh, choice. So I'm, let me queue up some code here, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Give me one second. So I have a lot of code that. I program myself because there's a lot of unanswered questions I have about stock. You can't always get every indicator you want to look at through a site like stockcharts.com, although I do think it's a great website. You can look at a lot of technical indicators here. Um, in Seeking Alpha, you can gain a lot of fundamental information. But ultimately, if you are going to go full-time, you're going to have a lot of questions about stock that can't be answered by anyone but 
yourself, and that often requires calculations or your own back tests. Now, here is a pattern recognition algorithm. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to grab this and drag it over so you can see it, hopefully, or not. I guess I'm going to have to save it and then open it. Um, here we go. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm keeping everything on one window, by the way, on a separate window, I don't know what I saved this as, is um, I'm opening a software company soon. So a lot of this code, not this code, um, but a lot of my other code that you might see here will be exclusive to my clients. Um, so I, I just can't you know, be throwing it on YouTube. Where did this go? Our plot. All right, so this is really troublesome. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open a Word file. Bear with me, I got this sorted out right, right now. Here we go. Um, word file, just open a new word. All right, so here's what we got. For the stock you just saw, here are the predicted movements based on where we are in what the machine perceives to be a pattern might not be an actual pattern but it's always good to take a look at something you trust something that has shown you in the past to be reliable um, as to where we're going from here now um, what we're looking at is the difference between the max and the min these are the predicted movements over the next 100 days of this stock KRO um, obviously from a 50% gain that we've had since the last 100 days um, to 170% gain is a lot more desirable than this downside, which is 100% downside. So you just compare the, the upside to the downside. And in many cases, when I'm not really 100% sure on the I'd say the, the characteristics of the stock, I'll just go with an objective machine learning algorithm. Um, so what this is telling us is that we have 120 upside and 100% 100 uh, downside versus 120% upside. Clearly the upside is larger than the downside. Uh, if you have a better way of looking at the upside versus downside and generally you do in the short term but for the long term I just go with a, a machine learning algorithm um, you can use your pre preferred method uh, I'll show you another thing we could look at where is our Google alright here's another thing you can look at the uh, price to earnings versus the price to earnings of the industry can be indicative of where or how far um, the stock will move when the market moves. It's not beta that you might be familiar with, but what it, it generally tells us is the potential for an unexpected rally. And this is something we know from backtesting. This is something that's very important when you make earnings trades too. Now, we see that there's a slight upside bias for Kronos and that's pretty much what the the algorithm just showed us, right? Uh, we've got 120% on the upside, 100% on the downside, and that's, I mean, we don't have that huge of a difference between uh, our stock's PE and the industry's PE, but it's slight enough to where we were tilted in, in the upside. Um, we're tilted in favor of the upside. Now, for a lot of dividend stocks, we don't have to care so much about the future cash flow valuations. And for a lot of financial stocks, actually, it's wrong to look at those, so I would um, ignore that. Anyway, this is our first pick. I just wanted to give you something decent and safe and uh, something where the macro environment is pretty reliable and uh, clearly in our favor. I don't think the global titanium dioxide market is going to change drastically. Not that I'm an expert in it, um, 
but it's just a material. It's a very simple macro environment to analyze. All right, let's go on to something more mundane, perhaps something more popular or desirable for the average investor who likes uh, stocks that they've heard before. Let's go, what do we look at first? Um, we will, here, we'll go to, we're gonna use stock TA, which is another, which is another really good plotting tool that's online and free. And here is our second pick, Target. Target, the retail store that is kind of like the Walmart for the middle class. Hold on a second. All right, so well, uh, Target clearly hasn't been doing that well. Um, and a stock like this, like we discussed, often has cognitive dissonance, but my back tests on Target show that it's okay. It doesn't have that much cognitive dissonance. It reacts pretty logically to news. So, and why is this important? We're really just trying to ensure that the volatility isn't larger than expected. Volatility, by the way, is the expected move in a stock. Um, the, the magnitude of the expected move in the stock, that's the dailies, here's the monthly. Many plotting tools, I believe what we just looked at also gives us, no. Many plotting tools will give you a, uh, where is it, a volatility chart. So here we have this chart in the middle, it's kind of small, but you should be able to see it well enough. The yellow line is the statistical volatility. The green line is the implied volatility. Now, if you're trading stock and because you're buying dividends, you want dividends, you're clearly trading stock, you only need to care about the statistical volatility. This tells you uh, the magnitude of the movements that your stock is going to or is expected to make, but it doesn't tell you the direction. So the higher this volatility is, the more you stand to gain and lose. We usually want to have a pretty good understanding of the volatility so that we're not exposing ourselves to risk that's too high for our risk appetite. Now for Target, like I said, the back test shows that it's not inappropriately illogical when news comes out. So I think it's a pretty decent, um, pretty decent, well, pretty decent in terms of safety for someone who wants a rather predictable holding. Now, clearly, it's not doing so well. And um, generally, middle class focused businesses are not doing well in the US because the middle class is being squeezed out. You got a lower class that has a lot of businesses catering to it, such as Walmart, WMT, which is doing well. Um, and you've got you know luxury classes that are selling high-end retail, like Tiffany. Um, but then in the middle, you got Target being squeezed out. Everybody knows this, and this goes back to what I said at the very beginning, we want to be on the side that seems a little bit crazy. We want when, for example, if we're at some sort of mystical cocktail party that I always hear about, um, and someone says, what kind of stock are you holding? And you say Target, we want everybody to gasp in horror because of the ridiculousness of your choice. Target doesn't have positive sentiment at the moment. That's good because it means on any good news, it will probably rally a bit harder than it should. Um, but on, on bad news, well, bad news is expected, which is why, by the way, we didn't really see any cognitive dissonance in the back test. Uh, bad earnings is expected, and we do get gaps like these. But what we're trying to do is figure out whether the gaps will fill. Now, of course, this is a dividend play, not a gap play. Um, you might know that I'm a gap trader. If you're interested in gaps, you can check out my other videos and they are totally 
uh, relatable to these videos. You can gap trade on a dividend stock or you can even use a gap trading strategy to gain an entry point, to choose your entry point to a dividend stock long holding like Target. Now, Target, the dividends. Again, three months like most stocks. Uh, there's your yield, 4.3. Your yield is, you, is always gonna be a little bit higher when a stock is down. You're paying, you're basically buying at a discount. So even though the dividend is the same, the income relative to the money you spend is gonna be higher, and that's good. You wanna buy um, at, a, at a higher, at a higher yield, yield when you buy it. So a lot of dividend players wait for dips and then buy in. Now, as you can see here, DPS, dividend per share, this has been increasing for the past 10 years. A lot of companies care a lot about keeping their dividend stable. So even if they go into debt, um, even if they, they hit some debt issues like targets hitting now, you see how the red's above the green, even if they're in debt, they might, just for the sake of sustaining the dividend and keeping investors happy, take out a loan to pay that dividend. Now, obviously, this is not good for the bottom line of the company, but it's good for you, the shareholder, who will continue to collect a growing dividend um, and can sell when you detect real danger. Now, notice insiders have been buying Target despite the negative sentiment, despite the downward momentum. So something good might be coming up, and this is, I have to admit, one of the reasons I'm pointing this stock out to you. Um, statistical research has shown that when insiders buy, the stock is more likely to increase. It seems like common sense, right? But for any type of decision in the stock market, you don't want to rely on common sense. You always want to look at the data um, because common sense would tell you a lot of wrong things. For example, common sense would say that if there was a lot of buying, then target should fall. But actually, we don't see that correlation um, in the data. But we do th see this buying correlation. Buying generally leads to uh, higher future stock prices so if you see a lot of insiders buying, that's a good sign. And that's a time to look for an entry to something you want. If you want this 4% dividend on a shrinking retail sector, by all means, um, check out the entry point. And I'm gonna show you in a second what I think of that entry point. But there's probably, I mean, there's an elephant in the room pardon the cliche, if we have a shrinking macro environment, the opposite of titanium dioxide, why would we want to buy the stock? Well, a lot of these companies are forced by the worsening macro environments to either pivot or die. And my money is on pivot for Target. Not only can they go to a uh, online model if they wanted to, but they do have some good things going for them that they could simply extend. For example, they have a pretty good subscription, um, like a membership-based based business model that you don't really see in Walmart. These are all fundamental aspects you can look up yourselves. I'm gonna show you something you probably can't do yourself which is calculate whether these gaps will be filled. Um, I don't know if I have the code queued up. I'm gonna see if I do. In the meantime, I'll just tell you the results. Kind of spoil the ending here. Uh, these gaps typically fill, but they take a long time to fill on this stock in particular. So I've got this algorithm I've written to calculate what types of gaps are good to play. And for target on this type of gap, what you generally see is a sell-off until a point and then it trends sideways and then it begins to fill. Now we saw the sell-off and trending sideways 
and it started to fill here, if you can't see that, uh, on the previous gap, this gap here. But unfortunately, as it was beginning to fill, um, we got another gap, and here, as it was beginning to fill, you got some sort of bad retail news. This is all selling because of bad macro environment sentiment. Um, but in general, what you are seeing with targets down gaps like this is a smiley face. It's, it's a smiley face that ends up going upward, closing the gap, and uh, for the most part, if you wait long enough, these gaps on target, these down gaps, will close. So if you see one, it's a good entry point, but not immediately. You've got to wait for the sell-off to continue. Like I said, um, the, the cognitive dissonance is not really strong in target, and what that means is if you have bad news, the bad news pulls the stock downward, but not too far. It just it pulls it downward. You've got one day of reaction, of strong reaction, um, and it could either be not enough, which is what usually happens with Target, and the stock continues downward, or it can be too much and the stock um, bounces back really quickly. For Target, it's usually pretty good, like wherever you hit on the day of the, the gap, is the price area so if it hits for example this candlestick this is the the day of the gap you can expect the price range to be around this and indeed we did see it pull back to that number um, before the bad news about retail came out now the code let's see it is queued up so let me grab a graph here Okay, here is what my <clears throat> gap algorithm says. Why is this over here? So there we are. If you were to trade on this type of gap in target, whenever you see this down gap, if you wait and then trade, you're going to be profitable. You're going to be profitable by the law of um, large numbers. By playing this enough, you're going to make your gains, um, uh, overtake your losses, and you see this overall return performance that has some steep um, jumps upward and also downward, but in the long run, you're in this positive sector. And it looks like, uh, check here. Um, <clears throat> What you're getting is you're getting about you're getting about two percent gain um, per day on these on these gap trades until the gap closes, which doesn't really mean anything because it's not a gap trade. It's just an entry point to a dividend trade. So if you um, are interested in buying something that has poor sentiment that you can buy essentially at a discount, and the uh, and something that has good technicals that other programs wouldn't tell you about, Target is a decent choice. And what I mean by that is a lot of people don't know how to calculate these gaps, how to do the back tests on the gaps. I'm showing you here are the results for mine. And uh, we also got insider trading. So we could be looking at this bounce back. Um, there, there are multiple ways to look at that, and like I said at the beginning of this, I don't want to get bogged down with all the different things we can look at for an individual trade. I'm just showing you what I think is probably the most relevant uh, few indicators for each. So again, um, we looked at price to earnings before. Look how low price to earnings is for Target. The, the, the whole world of um, retail investors is staying away from this one. The sentiment is so poor that PE has dropped to like, uh, what, what is that? Ugh, I can't breathe. One, sorry. Sorry about that. Throat is very dry. Um, it dropped to one sixth of what it really should be. Um, if it were the same as the industry average, 
we also see a really low price to book ratio. So the takeaway here is that there's a lot of upside and not much downside. The sentiment has already dragged it down to really low levels, what we call oversold levels. And you can see that in this indicator right here. Are we looking at the same thing? It's not target. If you go back to stock charts and you look at the fast stochastics, which is gonna be this bottom one down here, when Excuse me. When the black line falls below 20, the stock is technically oversold and it's due for some buying. It's due so, for some uh, dip buying. And check it out. We see that at this time, here's that smiley face that I told you about, downward smiley face we hit the oversold regions and it bounced back. That's typical of most stock. And of course it's gonna be typical for, for Target um, because my algorithm has said so. All right, so there's your more popular retail play. We're gonna move on to pick number three now. By the way, these are in no particular order. I'm just starting with uh, what I think is probably more manageable for the average trader. Um, let's move on to number three. Uh, let's pull up. Uh, by the way, this is simplywall.st, website that you need a subscription for. Um, it's worth it. It's a paid subscription, but you get all of this info, and you can even do comparisons. It's pretty useful. All right. Here we are with Wisdom Tree Investments. This is literally a unique stock. It's the only stock in the market that sells exchange traded funds. Now you probably know what these are. They are what other people call index funds. What they do is they track a general market or a general industry and they allow you to buy shares of that industry. Um, Wisdom Tree creates them and sells them to investors. Now, obviously, this is a good product because they don't, the, how the uh, ETF moves doesn't affect, directly doesn't affect Wisdom Tree. The sales are what Wisdom Tree derives its profits from. Now, um, the macro environment of this, you can probably imagine, is pretty good. And I'll talk about that in a second. But what I was first alerted to here was, um, where are we? Some insider buying, like Target. But this is more spread out, more evenly spread out. So the fact that it's been piled on by multiple insiders over the course of the year leads me to believe that there's probably something going on soon because insider buying, if it's based on insider information, if these insiders are buying because they know something good is gonna happen with the stock in the future, uh, they typically do it three to nine quarters before that happens. So we are already, we are already um, four quarters in, so we're basically at that median mark. The good thing is gonna happen if it if it if these trades are based on some news some insider information we don't know about that insider info is going to be realized within the next two years um of course containing 2017 which is what we're looking at uh so if you want exposure to that this is probably a good time to buy in of course we're not going to buy this blindly we don't just buy based on insider buying alone. We buy on multiple factors, one of which being a mismatch of the analyst's expectations and the actual trends in the stock. And this is something I really like to look at and seems to be rather, it's odd to me because it's something that anybody could look at. You don't need coding skills. You don't need statistical skills. Uh, it's something that anybody could look at that a lot of people simply don't. And that's 
the trends of things like cash flow and earnings. Um, when you see cash flow declining or staying stable, but earnings or profits increasing, that's the sign of a stock that's hitting its peak and will probably start falling. Now, um, on the other side of that is cash flow that basically matches profit, and that's the sign of a healthy company, even if the trends aren't really upward, right? Here we had the we have this camel-like hump um, that show us some some pretty good years, and then recently it's fallen. I don't think that's such a huge issue because we see profits going to grow, and as long as cash flow grows with it, we are holding a rather safe dividend stock. Um, now, like I said, we want to see these two grow in tandem, and I would say this is a pretty interesting buy-in position at, at the moment. This is a pretty good time to buy because we've already seen these huge uh, cash flow values come in. Um, the hype has gone, it's come and gone, and we're left with this inflection point that possibly will turn up and uh, we're basically at a low you can think of it like that the fundamentals from a cash flow and profit perspective are at a relative low so we can buy in at a time when a lot of people aren't really interested except for these insiders who are clearly interested so I have the feeling they know something um, that we don't and they are buying at this low because investors really don't see anything going on with the stock based on this fundament, fundamental data. Um, now, as for the, the, the macro I just spoke of, um, you might remember 10, maybe even five years ago, five to 30, 40 years ago, everybody was big on mutual funds. They thought instead of buying individual stock or instead of buying multiple shares or multiple multiple stocks and making a portfolio out, out of it you can instead give your money to someone a lot smarter than you and he would manage it for you in a mutual fund now many years later with the internet we all know that mutual funds don't perform very well they underperform the general market and that's what has allowed ETFs to become so popular the fact that ETFs outperform the market, but they don't charge you huge management fees like mutual funds do, already gives you an edge. You're paying less on commissions, essentially. Um, and I think this trend is only going to get stronger as time goes on, and especially now that we have um, younger people who are looking to invest. They're going to do the young people thing, which is Google what they should invest in, and uh, most people will tell you if you don't want to manage stocks or do research, your best bet is to buy an ETF. Um, so that could lead them to Wisdom Tree or whatever ETF on the market. But Wisdom Tree is the only stock that sells ETFs. So I thought it would be an interesting pick for a dividend stock. And the dividends, as we discussed before, are at a reasonable level for 4% is reasonable, it's safe. I mean, it pays, here we go, it pays above what you would get with bonds and uh, pays above, well, I guess 4% isn't average. It's average for mm -hmm. what I look at. The average dividend fund is, uh, or stock is paying out 3% annually. Um, <clears throat> Am I, am I forgetting something? No, no, no. So it's paying out 3% annually, and we're basically at that level. So yeah, that's that's your average. You got your insider trading. Um, not much more to say about this. If you like the idea of not buying the ETFs yourself, but making money off of the people who buy the ETFs, I would say this is, well, this is basically your only choice. So there you go, Wisdom Tree. WETF, let me drink here. My throat's a little dry. All right, so 
And by this point, you're probably saying, Damon, I'm not here for all of these tiny 4% dividend stocks. I want something that pays me more. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be hard to do that. But remember, what we're doing is we're looking for dividends plus growth and also possibly dividend growth. Otherwise, there's really no reason to buy stocks. Um, I always say the only reason to buy stocks is for dividends. If you don't, uh, sorry, if you're not looking for dividends, then play options. It's a lot smarter. But here's something that might be more fun and more, uh, I would say, fast paced. Maybe that's the right word. If you're a young whippersnapper and you cannot. <clears throat> You cannot stand waiting three months to get your dividend payments. Check out something like CRT, Cross Timbers Royalty Trust. This pays you dividends every month, much like the what was it, titanium dioxide. It's based on something that's easy to analyze, even though it's hard to predict. It's based on, um, well, it says oil and gas, but really this is a natural gas player so it's a bit different from oil and gas oil um your dividend payout here is seven percent and part of the reason for that is it pays dividends monthly so mm -hmm. expect to see some extra money in your account every month and uh, be happy that you're getting basically double what other dividend stocks are paying now like i said Gas here, gas, is different from oil. You can't analyze them the same way. Um, if I were to choose between a natural gas stock and an oil stock, I would be going, obviously, with a natural gas stock, which is why I'm recommending this. Here's one reason. This article points out that the experts in this field are predicting a peak in natural gas. So you probably remember, if you ever traded oil, you probably remembered all this hype about peak oil and uh, a lot of people feel like they missed the boat on trading oil. Well, we haven't reached peak natural gas yet. So if you're interested, do a little bit of research on natural gas. And if you think that it's a good long-term holding, Go and try out this uh, monthly dividend pair. It's, it's pretty interesting. And uh, while you're not exactly investing in, um, in well, you're not, you're not buying futures. You're not actually buying the natural gas. You're buying a company that has to manage related issues. Um, so it's a bit more complex. But still, you've, you've gained exposure to that market. Um, another reason I'm saying to buy this now is like we saw with Target, this is oversold. It's a good time to buy in. CRT, if you look at the stochastics, well, we, we kind of, sorry, I, I put all this together a couple days ago, but um, we didn't really miss the boat, but check it out. This is what we call in the stochastic signal this is what we call a buy signal so remember when it drops below 20 it's technically oversold but you don't generally buy until you see the first signs of the stock bouncing back and that happens when the black line and the red line cross the black line uh, crosses above the red line and that starts your rebound and that's what we're seeing right here um, you're not missing the boat or anything. It's only happened recently. We've only had three days of buying. And as you can see before, we've had multiple rallies like this. Uh, clearly, this is a contrarian play. If you want to look at the, uh, the past of this, it hasn't really been, been doing well lately. But hey, 7% yield. You've got a good macro environment. It's also oversold, so it's probably just gonna bounce back by its very nature. 
and uh, monthly dividend payments aren't going to make anybody complain. Also, if you want to check, because um, you'll probably, I might not talk about all of these different indicators, but I've got lined up, this is more or less my standard setup when I look at stocks uh, for investments, is the ADX line with the directional indexes, the Chai Keen oscillator and the fast stochastics down here at indicators. You can go ahead and take a look at those. I'll explain those. Um, oh, actually, no, I remember that I'm going to be explaining these for the next dividend stock, for the next dividend pick. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, next dividend pick is PEB. All right, PEB, Pebble Brook Hotel Trust. When you invest in what's called a REIT, a Real Estate Investment Trust, what you're doing is buying shares of real estate. You're essentially becoming an absentee landlord. Um, but you're doing it not for Joe Schmo with his little $200 a month rent apartment. You're doing it with whatever you want, which generally is something like, you know, like a medical facility or a hotel. It's specialized. Now, our specialization here is also a contrarian play because a lot of people don't think that lodging or hotels um, is a good real estate sector at the moment um, yet we see this stock moving upward so there's a lot of reasons or there's a lot of uh, ways to look at this and explain it but I'm gonna just go ahead and give you my forward-looking uh, thesis on why this is a good pick now first of all let's take a look at uh, the dividends that's the point uh, for a real, real, uh, real estate investment trust, I did the wrong one there, REIT, if you buy an REIT, you're buying, did I do the wrong one again? Okay, this is right. You're buying, um, you're buying something that's regulated in a different way than a company would be. So it's not treated exactly like a stock. A REIT has to, by the regulations, give the majority of its profits to shareholders. So you guys are collecting basically rent. It's not a dividend that's that's paid out by choice from the management. It's paid out by rule. Now we're looking at 5% for this one, which again is, is better than average. Um, but you got to realize we are in a, a a market that has negative sentiment. Mm. Where did I where did I see something that can sum it up? All right, forget it. We're not going to look at why there's negative sentiment because I'm not going to dismiss those claims. I recognize them and I agree with them. There is negative sentiment for the hotel real estate market at the moment, but I also have fundamental reasons why I would want to be long on on this uh, real estate investment trust that's focused on hotels. Um, let's say, I'll say there's two reasons, all right? What else do I got? All right, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll give you two reasons. All right, so the, the first reason is we have had an administration change. Now in the White House is a man who has made his profits through real estate, a lot of which were hotels. I have the feeling that a man like this is probably going to be good to the hotel industry. Um, and since the election, we, we have seen a climb, although it doesn't exactly queue up with the election. But I really doubt that any lobbyists from the hotel or lodging 
um, sector is going to have any problems swaying the heart of the U.S. president to being good to this sector. Um, so there's a fundamental kind of abstract, non-tangible reason we could be long on a sector that has negative sentiment. Uh, the second reason is when you look at a real estate investment trust, you want to know where the uh, real estate is. For PEV, it's, it's all over the US. Um, we could probably pull up a map. I'm not sure if that'll be very informative, but I'll do it while I talk. Uh, if it's in the US and we have uh, a lot of companies that are a lot of investors that are worried about the quote unquote forex issues, which means because a lot of American companies these days make their profits overseas, they upon returning the cash to the U.S., uh, they find that they don't have as much as they would have liked. Uh, while the business is good abroad the US dollar to whatever uh, is not a good uh, it's, it's not a good currency exchange rate at the moment and um, that goes for a lot of currency right now so many investors are looking to invest in the US but one problem with US companies is a lot of US companies are doing business abroad um, and additionally many investors for quite some time now have felt that there's not much growth left in the US. Um, the real estate sector is a sector that many people have uh, wet feet or cold feet, is that the phrase, to get back into because of 2008. So you've got an issue of fear. But the benefit here is because this company, I remember seeing a map, you can dig through it if you're interested. Because this company is mainly or 100% located in the US, it's all US real estate, we don't have to worry about the strong dollar. The strong dollar makes foreign investments weaker for our portfolio, but it makes uh, domestic investments stronger. And for this issue, we've got a strong dollar. And by the way, um, when you have a Republican president, historically, the dollar is strong during the course of his presidency. So we've got that historical aspect on our side. And again, uh, the president is probably going to be good to the hotel real estate sector. Okay, now back to what we were talking about before. The other indicators that I use as my standard for stockcharts.com. So the first is the ADX line with DI and minus DI and the second is the Chaikin oscillator and the third you've seen fast stochastics. I prefer fast stochastics because I'm mainly a trader. I want the indicator to move quickly so that I can get in day by day. Um, but if you don't care so much about about time timeliness, what you can do is you can look at the slow stochastics which by some people are considered to be more accurate. Anyway, we're not talking about that now because technically it's overbought and you might actually want to wait for PEB to fall back um, before you buy in. But the the ADX line here, are we looking at weekly or daily? Daily. The ADX line, how do we use this? When, all right, so here we have three lines. It's a little more it's a little more complex than, than, than the average. Um, so, Chaikin oscillator, one line, stochastics, two lines, and then the ADX with the directional indexes, we got three lines. Let's, let's go back to the uh, Chaikin oscillator, just take a look at it because it's only one line, it's easy to understand, but don't put too much value in the actual numbers on the side here. The Chaikin oscillator just tells you where the money is going. Is it flowing in or is it flowing out? If it's in the positive territory, money's flowing into the stock. Um, negative territory, of course, flowing out. And the slope of the line tells you how quickly that's changing. Mm. So at this point, if you can follow my cursor along, 
we see that money was flowing in to the stock and the flow of money was getting faster. Now the flow of money has slowed down a bit, but it's still positive. There's still money flowing into the stock. Don't be too fooled by the direction of the slope. Care more about where we are in the uh, positive and negative domains of this chart. All right, now let's look at the ADX line, and I'm gonna need to take a drink real here. Okay. All right. What do we look at first? The first thing we want to look at is which is above the other, green versus red. And more importantly, we want to see when they have crossed. The more recent they've crossed, the more likely it's going to be a good sign for us to trade. What we're seeing right now, actually it might be good to go back um, here. All right, we're going to go back here and take a look. So we saw the red and green line were battling it out, and eventually the red line won, and it moved up above the green line, and it stayed there for a while. Now what happened to the stock? Stock fell, kind of oscillated, but it fell. That's to be expected. When the red line crosses above the green line, the stock is likely to fall, and vice versa for the green line. So here, we see the green line cross above the red line, and we have this short but significant momentum. Um, and that leaves us with a question. What is the black line? The black line can be seen as the strength of the momentum of the movement of the stock. So, for this time period, for instance, we have downward momentum because the red is above the green. But the black line, you know, it wasn't that high. Um, so I wouldn't say there was any real decent momentum at that time. When you see the black line up and steady upward, like around this period, here, down here, you can check it out. Um, that's when you have momentum. And that's generally when you want to get into momentum trades. Now, when the black line is turning up, that's a good sign. Uh, it's not exactly, it's not exactly reliable, but the closer it gets to the green line, the safer I feel in making a momentum trade. Momentum trading is not exactly my forte, um, but if you're making an investment, momentum trading can be an important aspect of that that investment um, because it tells you that now is the time to buy the dividend stock is going to be moving upward um, one issue that that just reminded me of is when the dividends are paid to you they're paid to you in cash now the problem with that is they're taxed as cash so they're taxed as your income not as a stock. It's not taxed as capital gains. The stock, when you sell it, is taxed as capital gains if you sell it after holding it for at least one year. So if you're making an investment, you're going to want to hold it for at least one year. That means you want to buy when it's at a relative low and also when you have a decent upward macro market and a decent upward momentum. In other words, what you want is you want the indicators to be telling you it's okay to hold on to this for a while because that will reduce your taxes. Now, if you're new, if you're new to trading and uh, you're not in a high income bracket, it's not that big of an issue. You can just use the dividends and the stock as a uh, normal taxable income and you don't need to worry about that. That's just a little little side note for anybody who really does care about taxes. All right, so um, that is it for the five picks. Here they are again. There's Crow, um, which is a reliable mover. It is on an industry that's little known. It's a material that you can research pretty easily. It's a pretty simple 
macro environments we have here. Then we got Target, which you should know about. The uh, the sentiment is downward. The sentiment is negative on this stock, but we have technical indicators telling us that eventually Target's gonna pull back and move upward. There is, of course, the possibility that Target goes bankrupt, but I really doubt that. Someone will probably swoop in to buy it up at the very least. Um, then you got this Wisdom Tree ETF. It's easy to remember. W ETF that sells ETFs. It's a unique stock. And you've got insiders buying. And essentially you have new traders who go to this go to this company as a default to buy their ETFs. Then you got CRT, which is a bit of the wild card um, in this selection, in this ragtag team of five dividend stocks. It pays you every month. It has a high yield and it gives you exposure to a natural gas market that's gonna peak within the next three or four years. Then you got the uh, hotel real estate stock that we looked at. Uh, we got an in administration that is going to be decent to this industry, I believe. And this is a stock that's positioned well to be a purchase at the moment. Of course, if you want to make the, the macro play, on Trump being good to real estate and hotels and a strong dollar, but you want to choose your own hotel um, real estate investment trust, by all means, go ahead. I'm just pointing this one out because it looks to be technically a good time to buy. And then I'm gonna give you an honorable mention because really, I'm showing you five uh, dividend stocks that I personally don't have in my portfolio. Um, so it seemed kind of silly, but at the same time, you know, there's 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 a, a differing uh, viewpoint between people who think you can't recommend a stock unless you hold it, um, or you you can't recommend a stock when you hold it because that'll make you biased. So I'm going to give you a quote unquote biased biased holding which is tpvg it's biased because i'm holding it in my portfolio it is higher risk than all of these other dividend stocks you might ask why aren't you holding these dividend stocks if they're all good well i'm more of a high risk trader i like short-term trades but like i said if i buy stock the only reason i buy stock is for exposure to dividends and um, this is one of the stocks that i like the dividends of it's not necessarily stock. It's called a closed, closed-ended fund, TPVG, which means that the stock shares cannot be diluted. The company can't offer new shares. Um, Whatever is there is out there for good, and you've got to sell it like um, you know, like like a limited resource on the black market or something. The company can't swoop in and say, all right, we've made more shares, uh, now we can sell them, which hurts the investors because it drives the price down. We don't get that with this uh, closed-ended fund. It says, it doesn't mention it's a closed-ended fund here, um, but through research, you'll, you'll figure it out. Basically, what this company does is it lends money to businesses it lends money to businesses in their growth stages so you get a high risk reward uh, profile uh, profile with this one because either the businesses do well and they grow a lot and they pay back their loans which um, is good for us or they don't do well and they go bankrupt and then well this company can't collect the outstanding loan what I like about it is the high risk, which is paired with a high dividend. Um, in the stock market, the general rule is if you are willing to take a high enough amount of risk, you're going to be paid well. The question is, 
will you ever lose what you're holding? So here we are, a nearly 11% yield on a dividend stock. I love it. Um, even if you're not rich, even if you put in, let's say, $1,000, you're going to be collecting $100 at the end of the year, even if the stock falls. I mean, it's 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 a good an, an, one way to look at a dividend is uh, downside protection, right? If the stock, if you're looking at the stock as a growth stock and it doesn't grow, it can fall 10% and you're still not out any money. You've made money through the dividend, so you're still even, even though the stock um, has fallen. So this is the honorable mention, just so nobody feels like I'm, I'm either hiding uh, what I own or I don't have skin in the game. You can do your own research on this one. I think it's a, a decent pick. I mean, you got you got decent upside. I've done all the analyses. I always do a gamut of analyses before I make a, a choice. Um, and of course, I can't show you everything. It would just take too long. So I hope that today what you've seen has been useful to you and if it hasn't given you a stock pick, at the very least, it's it's given you some ideas as to how to choose a stock pick uh, for for a dividend holder. And uh, I hope that this video can be as successful as the one um, from last year. I got a lot of good feedback from last year's video, and I know you've been waiting for this one for a while. So my apologies for the delay, but hey, it's uh, finally out there now. Again, if you want to learn more about short-term trading, which is more my forte, just go to DamonVario.com, and there's a lot of free stuff on there for you. Um, if you're into earnings, this is a good place to check out um, my earnings predictions. Just sign up for the newsletter, and um, roughly once a week, I will send out my top five earnings picks for that week. That's it for now. Please, please, if this has helped you, leave a comment. Tell me what you're looking for in future videos, and I will write it in my to-do list. I always, I at least try to always um, respond to whatever requests you guys have as long as I feel it's a request that can help more than just one person if I make a video or an article on it. So, again... Thanks, and uh, sorry for the delay. Happy trading 2017.